My name is Olusegun Mukulu. Is oral sex a sin? I've received questions, this question in particular, uh, from my private inbox on my different social media platform, asking me to know whether oral sex is a sin. And I've taken my time to respond privately to everyone that asks me that question. But I feel a burden that I need to come out and address the issue openly. Ordinarily, it would have been safer to avoid such issue that um, may end up being controversial and just go on and discuss other things. But I feel that it will be irresponsible of me uh, to know the truth and not share it with my generation or simply for the fear of what people will say or think uh, to shy away from uh, teaching the truth. Before I go on, let me say that uh, this uh, channel is a Christian channel. Things that are taught here are based on the scripture and on the word of God. We have a video enjoying sex in Christian marriage. I'll put the link um, down below so that you may want to watch that video too. We also have a video on um, sex drive killers in, in Christian marriage. You may also want to see that. So we already have videos that addresses issue of sex uh, in Christian homes. And we have a blog where we discuss strictly issue of sexual intimacy among Christian couples. God created sex. Satan brought about sexual sin. Sexual sin and sex are two different things. Sex is good. Sex is honorable. Sex is a product of God. We should appreciate sex. You know, it's, it's a masterpiece from God. And we should appreciate it and see it that way. Sexual sin, on the other hand, is a violation of the word of God. It's a perversion of the creation of God. Just like human beings, we are good. God created us. But we can abuse his creation. We can do evil and make his creation look like it's evil. But we are beautiful. God created us to look that way. That's the same way with everything. Every single thing that God created... He said was good. It's sin that brought about corruption and contamination. So we need to be clear about that. Now back to that question. Is oral sex a sin? There is nothing like oral sex. That's where the problem is. People have come to define all manner and all types of sex, thereby creating confusion for them, for themselves. I asked the lady <coughs> who asked me this question. I said, can you kiss your husband? She said, yes. Do you feel it's a sin to kiss your husband? She said, no. I said, okay, what happens if you kiss your husband on the neck? She said, nothing wrong with that. What happens if your husband kisses you on the neck? She said, nothing wrong. What if your husband kisses your breast? She said there is nothing wrong. Remember Proverbs 5, 19 says, Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. I said, what if he kisses your hand? She said, no problem. And then I went on your tie, your leg, you know. And then I said, okay, so what if he kisses your um, private part? And then she paused. And then she got the message. I said, how come, how did you suddenly separate that part of your body and feel that, oh, if his hand or his mouth should touch this part of my body, suddenly it becomes sinful. Even when you want to deliver a baby, don't they put hand in your private part to pull out um, the baby from your private part? Is that a sin? When suddenly does that become a sin? So we must understand our body. The husband and wife are already one. They are joined together. Their body is one. 
That's why a semen that comes from the man could go inside the woman and mix together. There's, there's nothing more intimate than that. So there is nothing like oral sex. Sex is just sex. Just like that, there is no sexual style, acceptable sexual style. If, for example, you just want to look at the way animals would have sex, different animals engage in uh, mating in different ways by instinct, the way they were, they were created or they were programmed. You know, for us as human beings, it's not written anywhere that uh, there is a missionary style. There's nothing like missionary style. It is human being who called a sexual position missionary style or who called one doggy or that calls one reverse cowgirl or reverse... It, these are all the creations of human being. Sex is sex. It's what is convenient for you. There's really nothing like sexual style, really. It is what is convenient for you. So we should be careful not to um, be preaching our opinion. You see, we should separate opinion from the scripture. There are things that I may not personally like, but that the scripture, but they are not sinful things. I'm not going to go out and then begin to tell people what you are practicing is sinful or what you are practicing is dirty just because I don't like it, not because the scripture says it's sinful. So we've got to be very careful. Christian couple, you are free to do what the two of you agree to do. Whatever you want to enjoy in your marriage, it is left for you to enjoy it. Nobody can legislate for you and begin to tell you that this is the sexual style that you should practice or this is the type of sex that you should practice. What the, the goal is that you should be selfless, you should express the love of Christ. Even in sex, you can't separate your sexual life from your other life. Once Christ is in you, is in it has to reflect in every aspect of your life. So even when you engage with sex with your spouse, you want to make sure that your ultimate goal is that you want to please your spouse. You want to satisfy your spouse. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, one of it is being selfless. So you want to please the other person. You want to satisfy the other person. That is your goal. You don't want to be that kind of person that once you attain your own sexual satisfaction, you don't care whether your spouse is sexually satisfied or not. You don't care about that. You know, so um, we cannot legislate for people. God, that's why God didn't legislate for us. When, when you read Songs of Solomon, you see that he talks about your head, your tie. You know, he looks, he paints a scenario of a man and a woman that were naked and could see each other and could describe each other's body, could appreciate each other's body. Please, as couple, you can enjoy yourself. What is what you should keep in mind is this before you get married, don't engage in sex. That's fornication. That's ungodly. When you are married, don't have sex with somebody else other than your spouse. In fact, don't lust in your heart for somebody else other than your spouse. Those are the things that you should keep in mind. But in terms of how you have sex in your marriage, what you do. Nobody should legislate that for you. Nobody can tell you that. It's just like, how do I pray? There are days I sit down praying. There are days I lie down praying. There are days I pace around in my room um, praying. There are days that I kneel down when I'm praying. You can't legislate for me how I'm supposed to pray. That is left for me. How, how my posture is left for me is a personal thing. I decide whatever posture I want to maintain. And when you look at scripture, people maintain whatever posture that they want to maintain. In the, in, in, in the same way, when you want to have sex in, in your marriage, it's left for you. Whatever posture is convenient for you, whatever posture will give you maximum pleasure. That's nothing wrong. Please, pleasure is not sinful. God created pleasure. Even this temporary short pleasure that sex offers, God created it. So he, he wants you to enjoy it. If God doesn't want us to, to have pleasure, he wouldn't have given us a tongue. Because one of the functions of the tongue is to taste the sweetness or sourness or bitterness of whatever goes through our mouth, apart from secreting saliva. We could just have something that secretes saliva that doesn't taste... Um, where how sweet food is. But it shows that God wants us to enjoy. God wants us to have a sense of what pleasure is. Pleasure is not sinful. 
a woman having orgasm is normal. God created you that way. It is good. It is beautiful. You should experience it as often as you engage in sex. There's nothing wrong with it. God designed your body like that. In fact, you should thank God for it. A man having ejaculation is normal. It's not dirty. It's not sinful. God only wants these things to be done in the confines of the marriage. That's what we should keep in mind. So that removes the question, is oral sex a sin? How can something be a sin that does not even exist? There's nothing, there's nothing like oral sex. God didn't legislate which part of your, of your spouse body you should kiss and which part of your spouse body that you should not kiss. The two of you should come in agreement, whatever you both find enjoyable together and both give consent to each other to do because you both own each other's body. The Bible says you must not defraud one another. Your body belongs to one another. My prayer is that um, God will enlighten his word in your heart that we will live to please Christ and we will avoid legalism and human opinion that are forced on people that looks like they are the word of God. The Bible clearly wants us Again, so in fact, since the time we come, some people will begin to say it is wrong to marry because they are giving heed to seducing spirit. You know, so the devil will really always want to attack marriage, sex, and so on, and confuse it because once it's confused, there are other things people will not be able to understand or function properly in. My name once again is Olusha Gumokolu. If you have further questions, uh, you may put it in the comment box, and as God helps us, we would like to respond to them the other videos that i feel that may be relevant uh we have videos on sexual sin seduction and joint sex in marriage uh god willing i'll put the link uh in the uh below this video so that you can if you are interested you may want to click on them and watch them also you may also want to subscribe to this channel in case we we have to do an update on this video maybe as a result of people's question or we'll put similar videos up or check other videos that we have about the christian marriage and the christian life in particular working uh, with christ you may want to please subscribe to this channel and press the notification bell so that next time we drop these those videos uh, you will have access to them thank you for watching god bless you